Hi there, I'm Sid Misra. Um, I have actually moved through a number of career paths so far. Uh, I would say I've probably switched careers every five to 10 years or so. Um, I'm 37, so that's about 15 years and three careers. Um, I started my career as a professional musician. Uh, I then uh, began working for a nonprofit organization, and now I'm starting to move into data science. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about each of those things that I did. Uh, when I was in middle school, uh, my dream was to be a professional musician. Uh, through high school, college, uh, through the first 10 or so years of my career, um, uh, I made a living singing opera throughout the United States. That was what I did. Uh, I went into a, a theater. I was asked to sing a role in a given show. I would be paid as a contract. And um, that was my job, going from gig to gig. Uh, in my opinion, I think working as a musician is uh, quite different from making music that you enjoy. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend becoming a professional musician just because you like music. Um, in many ways, I think a career in music is actually much more like a trade. Uh, I think it's like being an electrician or like being a carpenter. Uh, it's a skill that you get paid to do. Um, it doesn't pay if you can't do it or if you don't do it as well as someone else. Uh, you don't often get much say in how you practice your trade uh, because your employer often dictates the job. Uh, in my case, that would be how far I'd have to travel for a job, um, how long I'd be away from home, uh, what quality uh, my housing or my accommodations would be while I was away, um, how much I'd make on the job, uh, and all sorts of things like that. So. Um, it really was just kind of a punch in, punch out type deal. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I, I would really say it was, you know, really just a skill that people paid me to exercise. Um, for those reasons, there's a saying amongst musicians. Uh, that saying, which I first heard when I was in college, uh, in music school, was only pursue a career in music if you truly cannot picture yourself happy doing something else. That was something that uh, my voice teacher, I think around the time that I was a junior in college, first told me, maybe a sophomore or something like that. Uh, so for many years, uh, I only pictured myself happy as a singer. Um, and eventually that stopped. Uh, I was, uh, we were, my wife and I, we were starting to think about starting a family. Uh, I was, frankly, um, uh, the monotony of the, of the job uh, of traveling, singing the same music night after night, doing the same show day after day, getting on a plane, getting off a plane, packing my bags, going to rehearsal, coming back from rehearsal. Uh, it just wasn't interesting to me anymore. It, it wasn't exhilarating to me anymore. Um, but having said that, I was still very passionate about supporting the art form. I still love opera. It's something that I want to see uh, in our uh, society. It's something that I think is valuable to our culture. It's just how I feel personally. Uh, so that brought me to working for the local opera house, which is Opera Philadelphia. I've spent five years working there, uh, and I've learned a tremendous amount about all of the business challenges uh, that lead to a career in music being so difficult. Uh, that's really what brought me to wanting to work for the organization. I wanted to see why is the career path, why, are, why is it so tough to work as a professional musician? Why are there so many risks that you have to take? Why is it so competitive? Why are there so few opportunities? Why do so many people get bumped out of the business? Why do so many people leave? Um, and I thought that, you know, if you could find out what was happening at the, in the, on the organizational level, you might have a better understanding of those challenges. Um, and I think there's a lot there. Uh, I think that some people point the finger at uh, funding for the arts, uh, about how music education isn't what it used to be, um, how there's sort of a shift in culture uh, towards more digital music or auto-tune or amplified music. Um, and those are all the types of issues you encounter when trying to justify why something like a classical art form or classical music or opera uh, should still be a part of society today. Um, I think while exploring the business side of opera, uh, I started to develop an interest in data, numbers. I wanted to kind of get the tail of the tape, as I think of it, about kind of what the metrics uh, for the business or for singers tell us about what's happening uh, in a broader landscape. So for me, I was always interested um, in statistics. I always liked 
tracking statistics. You know, I follow basketball, football. I like following how players were, were performing. I liked seeing what stats told you about their performance. I thought things like advanced analytics um, in sports, I thought that was fascinating. Uh, and I even thought about how you might apply that to an art form. Um, and uh, I never studied statistics, though. I never studied computer programming when I was uh, in high school and college. I was always dead set on, on trying to be a musician, so I didn't get into those topics. Um, and data science uh, really wasn't even a field, um, even 10 years ago, let alone when I was in college. Um, so now what I can do is I can show you a handful of projects that I've started to do as a data scientist and give you an idea of kind of what that is. Um, and so let me see here if I can flip this around, uh, show you what we got. So this is an example of a project that you can set up as a data scientist. Now, if you're not interested in data science, um, this might not make a lot of sense to you, frankly. But uh, if you're into, if you're thinking about code or if you're thinking about numbers and you know you like things like uh, I found this article by Five Thirty Eight, um, you know, talks about how board games keep getting more and more popular. If you like blogs like Five Thirty Eight or Nate Silver, you like tracking things like political polls, uh, you like things like uh, advanced statistics in baseball or basketball. Um, all of that is data science. You know, data has really become sort of the uh, thing that drives a lot of insights and decision making now in so many different parts of our society. Um, so I'll kind of show you, take you behind the the curtain here, and show you what <clears throat> what a data science project might look like. This is one that I was uh, working on, kind of in the nonprofit sector, looking at whether or not you can create an algorithm to predict how much uh, people might donate to a nonprofit organization. Donations can be the lifeblood for something like an opera house. So being able to predict where that might land could have profound implications on that, that organization's bottom line and their finances. Um, so here we'll take a look at maybe a Python script that I uh, wrote. Um, Python is a programming language. So if this, like I said, looks intriguing to you or if the concept looks intriguing to you, let me first say that um, this is what Python looks like. You can start pulling statistics together and such. Uh, I didn't know how to do a lick of this a few years ago. I hadn't learned any of it in uh, college, not in high school. And I was intimidated about looking at stuff like this for years. I was scared of it. Um, and it was only until I kind of got past that fear and kind of moved forward that I realized it really wasn't that difficult. Um, or that, I shouldn't say that it wasn't that difficult, that it um, is something that anybody can do. It doesn't matter what background you come from. You don't have to be a trained computer scientist or a trained programmer or a statistician to get into this stuff. You just have to have an interest in it and want to do it. Um, so that's what, you know, that's one script. Here's a, I'll show you another example of another project. Here's some workups that I put in a really simple website, you know, to kind of put a couple of these projects on display, um, take you through one other. Yeah, here's a couple dashboards that I built. This is in a platform called Power BI, which is like a uh, platform for uh, creating uh, visualizations and charts and insights. In this case, this was for a uh, company that wanted to provide stock analysis. So this is all looking at Apple stock and saying how it's performing over time and different metrics about its performance and such. So those are the kinds of things that uh, you can do as a, as a data scientist. Um, what I would say in kind of in closing is, uh, you know, as far as career pursuits go, these are my thoughts. Um, I think there's a good chance that what you want to do now uh, in middle school uh, even what you study, though, as far as college, um, it may very well not be what you spend the rest of your life doing. It may not even be what you do immediately uh, after college or for any part of your professional life. Uh, frankly, I was fortunate that I got the chance to work as a professional singer, and that's what I went to school to do. Um, but most of my classmates, frankly, in music school never worked professionally as musicians. Um, they left school and immediately were moving into other career paths uh, even though they went to music school, went to a conservatory and got a conservatory degree. Um, I would say there are lots of ways also to uh, pivot careers. It can be a bit of work, but there are lots of ways to do it. You don't necessarily have to have a degree. Um, you know, I, I have no formal degree in 
data or anything, data science, nothing of that. All of that is self-educated. Um, and uh, there are friends from college, granted, that I know who are much further along in their career than I am. Um, and I think that's because they kind of stuck with one path, whereas I kind of bounced between a lot of different career pursuits. Uh, but frankly, I don't know if they're any happier for that decision. Um, and in some cases, people I know actually feel almost trapped because they've kind of, you know, uh, gone down one path for so long and now they don't feel like they have the options to go in other directions. Uh, so the last thing I would say is don't be intimidated um, by things that you don't know how to do. Uh, if you haven't gathered that, you know, for me, that was code. That was math. Uh, I thought as a musician I would, that math wasn't something I knew how to do or that code wasn't something I could figure out. And so I walked away from it for a long time. I always liked, you know, I, I wanted to like it. I wanted to be able to do it, but I just didn't feel like I could. Um, and, uh, you know, in the end for me, it, it just, I think that that was just fear. And uh, so I would say if there's something that you want to do or something that you want to pursue, uh, do it. And, uh, you know, if you change midstream, then make the change midstream. Those are my thoughts as far as, you know, what to do career wise. And uh, those are my thoughts about being a musician and then moving into data science. And I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Thanks.